Hey there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Sure, it's over halfway through January, but that doesn't prevent me from doing the New Year's book tag. The original tag is by Bookables, and I was tagged by Alba over at Seriella. And check her out if you haven't yet, especially if you love nonfiction and history. There are six questions, and I love that they touch on things both bookish and non-bookish, so let's get right into it. Question number one, how many books are you planning to read in 2020? And easy answer is as many as possible but I set my Goodreads challenge for 120 books. But that's not a hard number. If I find that I'm not reading at that pace, I can easily d push that down to 110 books and then 100 books. I actually did that last year and it worked out just fine. But in the beginning at least, I like seeing if I can keep up this pace for 120 books. And that's what I used to read before book two. But yeah, making videos and stuff takes time. So I'm still trying to find what my new number is. Question number two, name five books that you didn't get to in 2019 that you want to make a priority in 2020. And the idea of books carrying over kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't want to think about it. I want 2019 to be over and done with, set. So instead, I'm going to talk about five books that I'm hoping to get to sooner rather than later. I've been eyeing them and can't wait to start. Two of them are advanced copies. First is Unvarnished, which I received from HarperCollins. Thank you very much. And what drew me to this is that it's a memoir by a bartender, because I love chef memoirs. I love reading people talking about their jobs in the service industry, in the food industry, and I've never seen a book of that type from a bartender before. I think it comes out May or June. I'll leave a link to its Goodreads page down below, which goes for all the books that I'll be mentioning today. And the other arc that I have is A Cowboy to Remember by Rebecca Weatherspoon. And this book comes out in February, so next month. I have been waiting for this so long. I got a teaser first chapter and the digital advanced copies only came out a few days ago and I'm so excited to be approved by Kensington Books. I love Weatherspoon and Beverly Jenkins has gotten me into more western romances and this one's a contemporary. I'm just excited to start and it got a starred review. I think it was Publishers Weekly maybe so all the better. The next three books have already been released. The first is The Outlaw Ocean. I first heard about it from Robert over at Barter Hordes. He said it was riveting and the subject looks fascinating. I mean, modern day pirates and stuff, right? So yes. Next is Realm of Ash by Tasha Suri. And this is a companion novel to The Empire of Sand, which I read last year and absolutely loved. Fantasy, desert fantasy, I'm there. And last is Jokyo Junen by Masada Midi. And this is a book of essays, not for panel manga by Masada. And she talks about, uh, the title is 10 Years in Tokyo, I should say, because she's originally from Osaka. And there's a big culture difference between Western Japan, Osaka, Kyoto, and Tokyo. It's kind of like the culture difference between the American South and maybe the Northeast. And so she talks about coming up here and her experiences, how she got started as an illustrator, and the culture differences and everything she found. And seeing that I recently moved from Kyoto up here, it seems like a perfect read. Number three, what genre do you want to read more of in 2020? And I don't know if there's any one particular genre that I want to read more of, but I do want to go back to some genres that I have written off in the past few years going, oh, that's not for me, and I won't even look at, look at them anymore. This includes small town romance, this includes thrillers, and we'll see what else I'll brush up against during the year. But I'd like to, you know, at least pick one up, and even if I DNF it, even if I hate it, that's fine. It's just seeing if there's something there for me. I used to do this a lot more, and by doing this a few years ago, I realized that I actually did like some contemporary romance. And if you've been following the channel, you know that I read actually quite a good chunk of contemporary romance right now. So it's just finding my niche sometimes within the genres. We'll see how things go. Question number four, name three non-book related goals for 2020. And I love this question. First, I want to figure out a way to study Japanese that I can stick to because in the past, I'm most successful when I can tie my studying to a time. So in the morning, I will do this, that before I go to work, for example, or in the evenings when I get home, I'll do this, that, and the other thing. And having these time signals to make habits is super successful. That works for me. However, with my new job especially, I don't have that kind of regularity. There are some days where I may be leaving the house at 7 a.m. and it's kind of hard to study before 7 because my brain's not there. And then there's other days like today where my appointment's at 4 and I may not even be home until 8. So a way to be consistent with study when my life is very inconsistent. I need to figure out a way to do that. 
Number two is to keep doing the yoga thing. I joined my local gym. It was around June last year, actually, and I started doing yoga. And I like it, to be perfectly honest, I'm more of a Pilates girl, actually, but what they offer at my gym is a lot, a lot of yoga and like one Pilates class. So if I wanna to go to class more than once a week, it ends up being yoga and I've turned out to like it and I'm learning a lot and I feel stronger and I love what it's doing for not just my physical body but um, mentally especially this one teacher who's amazing about the mental side of it more than the you know athletic side so I want to keep that up and another thing I like about yoga is that it's not competitive and if you show up to do it you're succeeding and that's, that's, that's a level I can do. That's something I can aspire to. So I'd like to continue. And number three is to go out to places for fun on days I'm not working. Now, because I go to a bunch of different hospitals all over the city, I'm constantly going to different neighborhoods. And I love that because I can find, for example, like good lunch places all over town, but it's not just going for my own sake, you know? And sometimes I'm very stressed because if I had a stressful appointment or something, you can carry that for a bunch more of the day. It's kind of harder to enjoy lunch when you've just had to give somebody really bad news, you know? So what I want to do is on the days where I'm not working, instead of just being a potato at home, get out and go to that bookstore that I've been meaning to see or go to that cafe that's nowhere near any of my hospitals, but I've been wanting to try that kind of thing. Number five, what's a book that you've had forever that you still need to read? And as far as physical books go, I only got my physical bookshelf maybe three years ago. And only since I got the physical bookshelf have I been collecting uh, physical books. So there's nothing there that quite counts as the, oh, I've had this forever kind of feeling. And while there are a bunch of chunksters that are waiting for me, uh, like I still have a bunch of Montagna's essays. I only got like 20% through that. Uh, the Jefferson volume from the Library of America. I started going through that. I was trying to do a few pages a day, fell off that wagon. But at the same time, they're not calling to me and I'm a mood reader. So they can just sit on my shelf. They can take that little nap and wait for them to call to me or maybe I'll call to them and we can go from there. But there's nothing that's on my shelves that's really annoying me that it's not read. And I view this as a victory. I don't know. I don't want books giving me stress. And number six, one word you're hoping 2020 will be. I am hoping for clarity this year. 2019 was a huge jumble. I prepared to move. I moved. I didn't have a job for a while, which is stressful for me. Then I had to go through a stressful process in order to get my current job. And now that I have the job, it's that stress of figuring out all of the new, like while interpreting isn't new, the system is new, they have different rules. I'm going to more hospitals than I did before. Each hospital is different. There's just a lot of uncertainty in everything. So I'm hoping this will help me take that confusing fog off the mirror and by seeing things more clearly and only stressing about the things that truly need to be stressed about, I can become more comfortable that I won't let any stress leak over into other parts of my life and that will help me relax and yeah just feel more comfortable where I am. So there we have it, the New Year's book tag, and I'm curious if you have a word that you're using to define your upcoming year. I have clarity here and it feels like what I want, but it's not like a word to strive for, you know? So I would love to hear if you have a word. Tell me it down below. I need ideas. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new and I will see you in the next video. Bye.